From is a mousetrap and these characters are the bait. We're breaking down the ending of episode 3, but before diving into this episode, I have to discuss a secret easter egg in the Rendus Move website. In the previous episode, we see how Tabata is showing the article of how they went missing, but here we see a Rendus Move easter egg. This is a company that we have seen a few times already. If you go to this website, you will see this message, something went wrong and we don't know what. Please try again. It's a really interesting and the color is yellow. Hold this thought. When you go into the page source, you're going to see this date, 1864. 1864. 1609-3333-1978-1672-1931-1752. It's not a coincidence that these are the numbers, some of them, that we see in the lighthouse, especially in Davida's dream. If you search for a secret image on the website, it's this image, 1597, which connects to the intro of the series with the boy hiding in the house. And this too look like some skulls, the same one we see here in Miranda's drawing. They look like dark angels and a kid hiding under the bed. 1597 is actually the address of Victor's home, so hmm, interesting. Another clue about the yellow is the man in the yellow suit. What influence does he have on from? We see the yellow also in Miranda's painting, so all of these three things already are connecting. So what I'm thinking is that this man, the man in the yellow suit, has some control or he's the owner of this company. And how does he have so many information like the numbers? It's a theory for now, but let me know your comments and I Yes, in the comments below. Okay, so Mousetrap, what a title, right? It's creepy, it's unsettling, and it's like the town itself is playing with his characters. First off, let's talk about Kenny. He's leading the search party into the woods, but you know what happens when you wander out the path in Fromville, right? Well, bad things, bad, bad things. And with Jade and Dale tagging along, this is a recipe for disaster. And you know what's really creepy? Those statues they find in the woods, something that we saw already in episode one. And I don't think they're just random decorations. And I think they have some connection to that pilgrim dude with the skull. And I feel like this is like a talisman. A, lo a lot of you have been saying this, but bigger in proximity. We need to talk about that scene because it's seriously insane. So we see this pilgrim dude and similar to the ones we have seen already in Henry's basement. And this guy is drinking blood from a skull. It's a scene straight out of a nightmare, a twisted ritual that's giving me some serious Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom vibes. I think this is huge. It's not just a random act of violence. It's a blood ritual, a dark sacrament. What if those missing years in the lighthouse to these times when these rituals were at their peak? Those moments of pure evil. I'm starting to think that this pilgrim is like a clue. He's a symbol of the town dark history. It's a connection to those ancient terrifying forces, maybe. And Jade's reaction obviously being scared and Christy following after him, it's like she's walking into a trap, literally. But yes, I imagine that they're gonna stay on those logs and we're gonna see them in the next episode. Okay, let's talk about Fatima because her storyline and is one that I'm seriously worried about. This pregnancy is not what it seems. It's like a twisted version of a miracle, a corruption of a new life. We see her at Connie house, and man, she's not doing well. Those pregnancy complications, they're getting worse. It's like her body's rejecting this child, this thing that's growing inside of her. And that scene again, where she's drawn to those rotten crops is so disturbing. Remember how she said earlier that she cannot even stand the smell of food? I don't think so. And now she's devouring this like they're candy. I got a really bad feeling about all of this. It's like the town is twisting her, changing her, and I'm all about that Keikai and Amiona stuff. That's one of my theories. It's like the entity is taking advantage of this pregnancy, this symbol of hope, and breaking it into something horrible. So you think Fatima's carrying a Keikai, a childbirth demon monkey thing, and the Amiona, is she using her to be the surrogate mother of this creature? It makes you wonder if the Amiona is connected to that shadowy figure in the caves. They're all symbols of this dark, ancient evil that's at the heart of Frambil. It's like they're working together, pulling the strings of this nightmare. Now Elgin having those visions of the lady in the kimono, the blood ritual. What if he's being shown a way to intervene? Is this even a trap for him? 
Now, let's talk about Boyd because he's not okay. We see him in this episode and he's a mess. He's grieving, he's angry, he's haunted by those visions of Father Cathery, and he's and it's like he's lost in his own personal hell. He's got this crazy plan to capture a monster and it's clear that he's not thinking straight. Donna and Alice, they can see it. They're trying to reason with him to talk him out of this dangerous mission. But boy, he's not listening. He's too focused on revenge, on finding answers, on showing that he can still help the town, even if it's the last thing he does. But you know what I'm thinking? It's not really about the monsters anymore. It's about Boyd's own inner demon. He's battling against the darkness that's consuming from Bill. But that darkness is also inside of him. And this plan to trap a monster is like he's setting a trap for himself. But let's discuss Davis's journey in the real world. It's intense. And I'm about to drop a theory that's about to blow your mind. What if Tabitha is actually Miranda? Miranda being reborn. I know it's crazy, but it's like those, but it's all those weird similarities. They're not just coincidence. The bracelet, the song, the visions of those children. The tower is like their echoes from a past life. Clues that Tabitha and Miranda are connected, something more than just shared experiences. But how could this be possible? Well, maybe alternate realities. What if there's something more going on in From, something, something supernatural? I'm thinking that when people die in Fromville, they don't really die. They're reborn trapped in this endless cycle. Their souls recycle by the town's evil entity. It's a seriously messed up concept, but it makes sense if you think about how Frombill is like outside of time. This, and you know what? This reincarnation theory explains why Tabitha feels so drawn to the children. It's like Miranda's spirit. Her past life is, is Tabitha. What are your thoughts on this theory? I, I have proof that I'm gonna do a separate video on this, but keep this in your mind. Now, speaking about the next episode, episode four is titled There and Back Again, and we know Tabata is returning to From. And you know what's really exciting? The way this episode is gonna set up the next two episodes, episode four, There and Back Again, it's like a classic hero's journey. And Tabitha Return is going to be a game changer. The synopsis tells us that Boy is going to have to make a tough decision about some newcomers arriving at nightfall. It's those ambulance people, and yes, and Victor is digging into his past, literally trying to find answers, maybe even a way to help Tabitha. It's going to be awesome. And then episode 5, The Light of Day. It shows a new beginning, a fresh start. But in From, those new beginnings always come with a price. Tabitha's back in town, and I bet those new surroundings are going to be a living hell. She's going to have to face the town, the monsters again, those twisted mysteries, and those emotional scars. And Boyd, well, his leadership is crumbling. The residents are questioning his judgment. Now real quick, now the bottle trace. They're like, they're talking to us. Back in season 1, episode 9, Boyd found a number, 1864 in 1. A year that's already etched into the lighthouse. A year that's tied to the civil war, to that soldier Jade keeps seeing. It's all connected. What if those bottle trees are markers of time? Points in this endless cycle of dead and rebirth. What if they're the key to understanding the town's power? Maybe even a way to escape. And that other bottle tree, the one with the unknown year. What secrets do they hold? I'm telling you, the writers of From are playing for the chess with our minds. But now, before you go, let's go ahead and play the trailer for episode four. Too many things are changing here. There's never snowed here before. Why can't they leave us alone? I have to remember. Everybody just talks about how afraid they are of dying. Well, I don't think that's the worst thing that can happen to you here. Remember what? What's missing? Are you looking for these? You can't save them all. But that's the video for today. What are your thoughts? I will do my separate video for episode 4 theory tomorrow on how Tabata and Miranda are the same person. My name is Christian from BM Premiere and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye everyone.